So I promised uh, we would finish up this beta flight uh, update so we could get bidirectional D shot working and RPM filtering working. And this is the main portion here. We're going to get in some good stuff right now. The last video, if you haven't watched it, we, we backed everything up and I'm now what we're doing is flashing everything to our official releases, our official version. So putting everything on official releases and we're going to give that a test. So latest version of Betaflight installed. We'll double check though. I believe it was 10.6.0 of the configurator. Fire up Betaflight. Make sure it doesn't find any new releases. Nope. See, I'm using 410. We already did a data dump. We are ready. If you guys haven't done this before, you can either type BL for bootloader here or go back to your main setup menu, main setup screen here. Activate bootloader DFU, and we're in DFU mode. So, for flash, you can also hit update firmware here. Same thing. We're going to go look for our latest official releases. This is my iFlight 4-in-1. I bought it as a stack. It's um, EF, it's the F7 iFlight 6X F7 Dual Gyro, which shows up under EF722 Dual. Mine is the legacy version. They have a newer version 1.2 that is um, the DJI um, compatible. It has a, I think it has a ribbon ready to plug in, but I haven't messed with that. This is just the original. So we have just one release here, the latest 410, as of 10 16 2019. Been out a little while, a couple weeks, and I noticed they haven't, no new ones on there. Uh, but if we go into development, let's look at development real fast. I believe they're working out there on 4.2. Yeah, see, there are various versions of 4.2 out there already. They're already past 4.1. So, about time to start testing 4.2. But now that 4.1 is official, let's turn off our unstable releases, grab our latest file. turn off this uh, no reboot sequence. This was, I was um, updating tiny whoops and some of my tiny whoops you have to plug them in with the pin and it uh, flashes on connect so. But this is good. Let's flash. Pow. I'm going to close that. We're all successful so we're going to reboot. And I'm going to pull up that GitHub article for you. So if you just search bi-directional D-shot and RPM filter, come on, and it's the very first guy that comes up, Look, make sure you're looking for the GitHub, and very important here, I want to discuss, now that we're flashed, latest version, it talks about, we did the, uh, the ESC portion in the previous video, um, talking about firmware, 32-bit, motor poles, these are standard 14 pole motors, most of your 22 series motors, you can check your manufacturer, they're going to be 14, most of them. We talk about motor protocol D-Shot 300 versus 600, we're going to discuss that. But before we even get into there, the biggest thing. Scroll down here to advanced topics. Timer based bidirectional D shot. This is where I've had some discussion with uh, other folks, other builders, in some forums and online. And they and I, I point out that I still reference some of these snippets. And, and yeah, they're saying you don't need to do that anymore. Beta Flight 4 one official release. You don't need the snippets to get. RPM filtering to work. That's true. But read what they talk about here. What, what we're discussing is timer based bidirectional D shot. The purpose behind this, this function is to lower the CPU load on your flight controller. 
Um, RPM filtering inherently uh, causes more stress, not stress, causes more, uh, well, we'll read it out here right now. Uh, if your FC supports it, you can use our timer-based bidirectional D-shot implementation to lower the CPU load of bidirectional D-shot. Prior to 4.1 RC1, this was the only available implementation. And that is why before on some of the, especially some of the earlier development builds, you had to do this because this was the only way they had bidirectional working. Now they have, I, I'm guessing there's some workarounds for flight controllers and, and mainly your ESCs that don't support timer-based, which is more of a load on your CPU. It's kind of a workaround, it sounds like. But if you can get, if you look at these snippets, and you may have to do a little bit of tweaking in the CLI for your, your timers and your dims just to get it to work right. But I, I really stress that you look at this and see if your ESC is in here or your flight controller is in here. And in my case, yes, my EF, EX F722 dual is listed. And if you open that snippet, there are some commands to enable RPM filtering apply these settings. Yes, it'll work without this, but, and I'm going to test this both ways, um, seeing how my setup works with BitBang on, which means timer base is off. If you're using BitBang, that's kind of the workaround so that you're not using timer base, but it's more CPU intensive. So I've been trying to get this to work. You know, I want things to work as optimum as possible. So I've been going for this, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to put these commands in, and there's just a few of them. I'm going to put it on raw here so we just get the text. Anything with, if you know anything about coding, anything with these remarks, they call them, um, those are remarks, those don't, those are notes for our reference. These here without any preceding characters are actual commands that we want to put in. These three timer settings, these three DMA settings. Everything below here, your gyro and your pit process, these are basic bidirectional D-shot settings which are probably already set in our default 4.1 but we'll double check. Um, same thing with your scheduler, optimize rate. Um, debug, I probably won't do any debug mode right now. And it also has a little mention down here of configuring your dynamic notch filters, which I, I also use those numbers. Those are also in the, the main article, but what we're really concerned with the most is these timers. So we're gonna put the timers and DMAs, we're gonna put those in our CLI, but any questions on that, just go back and look at that bidirectional D-shot and RPM filtering. And some may say that, no, this article is older, it's for the old. No, this article has been updated. If you look at when I was working with development versions, this gave you directions on how to go build your hex file to flash your ESCs because they didn't have an official release yet for your ESCs. Now they're telling you, yes, there is. Just load the latest version on your BL Heli configurator, 32 configurator. So this has obviously been updated. That wasn't there a little while ago. But this guy, I'm trying to get to work with timer-based. That's our goal, get the best thing working. So I don't mean to complicate that, make things more complicated. I'm just trying to tell you, show you guys that there are some things in here if you have these flight controllers that might make it just a little better. It'll still work without it, just like most of your other flight controllers, but hey, let's give it a shot. Let's connect up. We first have to set our basic settings such as um, it's already grabbed my serial based receiver on UART2 and I believe if I remember right UART5 is my ESC sensor. Let's double check. I took screenshots of that too. That's why I like to do some screenshots and the data dump so I can just go quickly look back at some of my screens. So let's look at R1, Tune, 41, Official. And we're on ports. Yep. And that's the only thing I have set is 2 is my receiver and the ESC is on 5. Let's make sure we have that correct. ESC is on 5, so let's save that. 
configuration, I run motors reversed. We are going to start with D-Shot 300. And let's reference that. When we talk about D-Shot 300 or 600, we're talking about fid loop speeds. If we use 4K or 8K, 4K, they tell us to use D-Shot 300 for greatest reliability. If you're going to use 8K, 8K, probably want to use D-Shot 600. Uh, with 8K PID loops, D-Shot 300 will only update motors every second PID loop, meaning if you run 8K, 8K with D-Shot 300, it's not gaining anything on your motor protocol, which isn't a bad thing. It's just not speeding anything up. Um, but that doesn't mean that 8K, 8K 600 would be faster. We'd have to test that. Now, just to make the head a little bit more confusing, if you if you go down here, they discuss a little bit more about motor protocols, loop times, and D-shot. And they actually recommend under here, bidirectional D-shot works with D-shot 300, 600, and 1200, also with ProShot 1000. For practical purposes, D-Shot 600 works well at all PID loop rates. So that's telling me that 600 should work well, no matter what your settings are. So I was at D-Shot 600 with 4K, 4K, and I really like that when I look at my CPU times and everything, it, it, it looks really good. If I bump up to 8K on mine, and we'll try it, it looks like a little bit too much um, workload on my CPU so but let's see what we get what we have here in the new one and versus uh, the changes so just want to throw that out that's why I start there D shot 300 ESC sensor bidirectional D shot I island for 14 motor poles is we're gonna go back to the snippets and we're gonna put these in First, let's just see if it changes anything. How about that? We'll copy this timer. And, and again, we're, we're back to the snippets on um, timer-based bidirectional D-Shot. We're trying to get timer-based to work. We'll paste that in there. See, I changed it. So it is different. I changed it from AF2 to AF1. Let's go to the next one. And, and you can copy these uh, multiple. But I'm doing one at a time because I want to see if it actually changes what's in the default setting. I haven't loaded the official version yet, so. So, the second timer, there was no change. If you saw that, interesting. Let's look at the third timer. That one was changed, okay. Now let's go to our DMAs, paste our DMA, that was changed, second DMA, doing really well today, paste that, change from none to one, so we had a definite change there, copy that, and we had a change there. So. There was only one that did not, and it was the second timer, okay? What else do we have? Let's look at gyro sync denim. Set. See, they have the command ready, so you can just copy it. Okay. If you do that raw. So we change that one. What's the next one? So let's copy that bad boy. Paste that one in there. Boom. Okay. What else do we have? We're already on D shot 300. Trying to get this going as quick as we can, guys. Sorry. On. And then we have D shot burst off. Set D shot underscore burst off. Bi directional should already be set on. Get D shot underscore bi-directional because we already checked that in our in the GUI that's on good now let's see what our dynamic notch ranges are set at 
get dynamic notch range. It's set at medium. Perfect. I'll just copy that. That's a long one. Copy that. Paste that. Great. We want it to be 250. Set dynamic notch Q equals 250. Bang. Okay. So that's our snippets. We're looking good there. Notes. We did our timers. Set loop time to 4K to have enough computational time. So we're not going to go above 4K right now for our tests. We're going to stay at 4. Probably do 4.4. Four. Okay. We talked about timer based. Oh, and, and the most important setting here, I don't know if we even brought that up, was bitbang. What is my D-Shot bitbang setting? We want that off if we're using timer based. Did I even bring that up? Let's go into the CLI, get bitbang. See, it was auto. So we should have that set off. Back in our snippet, if you read, it's not in the snippet, but up here right above the timer based. Starting from using the command bit bang off. Don't forget to turn back to auto if you want to use standard D shot. So set D shot underscore bit bang equals off. Bang. Save that. So we've saved all that. And I'm gonna disconnect because I want to let that cool down a minute. Let's see what she does. Configuration is looking good. We're on 4K, 4K. Let's check out our motor tab. See, we have air percentages, we have temperature and RPM. So, let's power up. Here we go. And you don't need your radio for this part. You can do this testing without your radio. Take your props off, though. Warning. Let's spin them up. Ah, we got noise. That's good, good, good. Let's also double check. One thing we didn't do in the last video was double check our motor directions. So let's go to idle here. Motor directions. Spinning out. Very good. So those are spinning out. Perfect. Those are the same. Those are the same. Cool. As you can see we have zero error percent. Excellent. We're getting good telemetry data, RPM, and temperature. From here, before we kill the motors, let's go straight into CLI. Okay. Tasks. So we're, that's looking pretty good. We're looking good. And what you really need to look at here is make sure this is really important that your shown frequency matches what you have set. Now see, I'm four, we're 4K, 4K, so it shows them both combined. And it shows right on 4,000. Um, our max load is 44%. I mean, this is very good. These are what we're really concerned with here and down here. So. Let's kill the motors. Let's go back in here and I'll kill the motor. And unplug. So that looked really nice. At 4K, 4K. We're going to disconnect. I really like how that looks so far. We're going to go out and test. There are some, a few little more tweaks and stuff. Uh, next video we'll talk about I'll bring up, we're going to tune a uh, PID tune, and we're going to discuss um, absolute control, integrated yaw, more filter settings, and there's some settings such as iTerm relax, iTerm relax modes, and, um, you know, just roll pitch and roll pitch and yaw, um, and the iTerm relax settings for, you have separate settings for just iTerm relax and for just yaw iTerm relax rates. We'll talk about some rates and my other settings as far as fail safe, receiver, modes. We'll go through the, everything else in the next video, but that's 
we're, we're using up some time here. So 